Hello there, everybody. This is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be the quarter year crisis tag video. I'm very excited to do this. I remember last year I saw Jenny do it and I'd never even heard of it. So um, it was on my mind <laughs> to do it again. And I don't think I did the mid year or the end of year freak out tags last year, but for some reason, like the quarter year crisis tag, Apparently I can remember that one. Um, but regardless, let's move into it. So the first question is, how many books have you read so far this year? So not counting DNFs, I've read 33 books this year, which I'm actually pretty shocked by. I don't usually read that quickly, I don't think. I feel like 11 every month is pretty unusual for me, but I have been reading a lot of short books and I've been really jamming through audiobooks. So maybe that's helping. It's kind of making me want to read some long books because it's a little bit exhausting to wrap up this many books. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm kind of excited by the prospect of enjoying long classics and, and books again. So um, I'm excited because this summer I definitely have some plans to read long books. Like, um, I'm going to be reading The Tale of Genji this summer with a group and definitely follow Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf if you're going to read along with us because she's going to be hosting the live shows on her channel. But I'm all, I, I've am i read a lot of long books as well. Not a lot. I've read some long books as well. Like, I'm most of the way through Way of Kings. I read Midnight Sun. I read... Um, the Sparrow, that was quite lengthy. I read Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth. So I've read some long books in the first three months. It's not just been short books, but I guess mood reading is really working out for me. <laughs> 33 books. So yeah, and some of them I did also start in 2023. So that might be part of why I have such a large number. But anyways, um, have you already found question number two, a book that you think might be a favorite? If not, what was your favorite book you read that wasn't quite five stars? So I have over here notes from the underground. The light didn't fall. Success. Um, this, I, I'm currently also reading the double still. It's taking me so long because I just really want to finish up with notes from the underground, my video on it before I move on to my next Dostoevsky. But Notes from the Underground definitely has been my favorite thing that I read so far this year. I spent so much time on it, so much time reading it, and it, it was worth every instant that I spent. And I spent a lot of time researching it too. So I'm really hoping I can put out a really in-depth, detailed review of Notes from the Underground. So stay tuned if you're here for Dostoevsky content. It's coming. It's coming. I'm just, it's, it's slow, slowly coming. Uh, so definitely my favorite thing that I've read this year so far, but 2024 has been a banger of a year. I have read so many, did I even, should I describe it for you? So this is following a very petty, nasty bureaucrat um, who basically, it it's a satire of a certain um, viewpoint that was really popular in Russia at the time, which is utilitarianism. It was a certain kind of Russian utilitarianism um, where <laughs> this character is satirizing characters that were written in a novel that was like a really famous utilitarian novel of the time in Russia. So it's a really savage satire. I laughed so many times while I was reading this, but it's also like really wise, I think. Um, and I probably read this, read this with some friends and they also felt the same way. It really gives you whiplash though the first time you read it. I read it for the first time when I changed my channel name to Dostoevsky in Space. And I filmed a review and then I just never put it up because it was mostly like, I don't really get it. <laughs> but the second time through, I was determined to get it and I definitely feel like I'm getting it better. So, and what really helped me with it was the biography of Dostoevsky by Joseph Frank. Such an amazing biography. Anytime I read something by Dostoevsky, I read the chapters on that story in that biography. And I just, I've been reading the condensed one, but there is a five volume biography by Joseph Frank of Dostoevsky that I have also dipped into when I wrote my Dostoevsky um, article on his Christmas short story, which 
I, it's from the Unexpected Journal. That's who p published it. Um, I did dip into the five volume biography. But anyways, I'm just going on and on about this because I had so much fun. It was a great way to start the year. Definitely started me off strong getting involved in a research project. I've missed doing that, honestly. I love researching and posting a long video that's taken me months and months and months, but it is a lot of work. <laughs> so, because um, I want it to be like perfect, you know? So anyways, that's that's been probably the best thing, but I've, like I said, I've had such a great year. I mean, I enjoyed Midnight Sun so much. I really thought that it was gonna be another nonfiction book. I mean, I started off the year by saying, yeah, I'm really enjoying nonfiction. That's going to be my new genre kind of a thing. Like I was expecting this channel to go like the nonfiction direction. And I have read a lot of nonfiction this year, but most of my favorites are actually fiction, which hasn't been the case for like two years. So um, I, I guess I really had a hankering for nonfiction, but I'm meeting it. And now I'm enjoying fiction again, which is a great place to be. This was also five stars. It was so good. I did a whole video on it. If you're interested in my notes, what else did I read? Bunny by Mona Awad. That was another five star. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. That was a reread. Also five stars. Careless Rage for Life. I have over here. Out from the library. I need to buy this one too, honestly. It was so good. I listened to this one on audiobook. So entertaining. This is a biography of Dorothy L. Sayers that was super, super entertaining. And I learned so much about her young life that I wasn't aware of. Like the fact that she actually had a son and nobody knew about it because she didn't tell anybody. And her, upon her death, he went around like notifying all her friends like C.S. Lewis that, uh, yeah, I'm Dorothy L. Sayers' son. <laughs> and yeah, anyways, she kept it a secret because as a single woman working at the time, you know, in the thirties or something when he was born, um, that would have ruined her career and she was the only provider for this kid. So yeah, that that's why she didn't tell anyone, but it was still like really shocking that she like had a whole secret life basically that none of her friends knew about. Uh, anyways, that was a fabulous biography. Great on audio. The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. Oh my gosh, such an amazing Catholic sci-fi book. Highly recommend. It's a classic for a reason of the genre. Um, so yeah, I'm having a great reading year and it's just not, there's not that much nonfiction that's topping it. Oh, I skipped The Long Loneliness by Dorothy Day. Wow. Wow. What, what a great book. I read this for the Lenten read along on my channel and it was a book that changed Faith from Faith in Books opinion about like a lot of things. <laughs> like it, it inspired her to become a Catholic again. So I definitely wanted to read that and it was so good. I also spent like a month and a half reading that book. No joke. That's like all I was reading physically with my eyes for the most part for like a month and a half. Um, and I have so many quotes and I would love to do a review of that too, but we'll have to see if I have the time. We'll see. Okay. Um, and then the other one that I had written down as a five-star book, I mean, there's so many, but Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth. This is another one that really... Well, this will be later, a later question, a book that shocked you. I was so shocked that I loved a giant classic because I thought I was out of my giant classic era, but maybe I am not. I'm back. Am I back for long classics? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see the summer. Um, so, okay. Uh, and Attack on Titan, I've been loving. Yeah, it's just been a great reading year. I just could keep going on and on and on about all the great books I've read so far this year. Any one star books or your least favorite of the year? So yeah, probably Eagle Drums. This is a Newbery Honor. It didn't like win, but it's a Newbery Honor middle grade. And it's about native Alaskan folklore of, there's like a, there's like a f story about a feast in Alaskan folklore. And it's um, kind of, I just, we're following a boy who meets an eagle god and he's basically told by these gods that he has to invite a bunch of people to a feast. And that's kind of like the plot. It's a bit spoilery, I guess, but I don't know. I, I just feel like the plot wasn't really the point. But anyways, um, but the characters weren't the point either. I feel like the whole point was the the descriptive detail, which was really good. I actually really did enjoy the descriptive detail of this work. That was probably the strongest thing about it. But, and I kept reading it, even though I was like, this is like 
not my favorite. I kept going because it won the Newbery Honor and because it was so short. So I just listened to it, but I was super bored. So that's probably my least favorite book of the year, unfortunately. I read this for middle grade March. Just didn't really care for it. So, um, but it was only, it was still like a three star. I really enjoyed the ending. So I guess if my worst book of the year is a three star, that's not bad. But basically, if I'm not enjoying something or it's not feeling like it's for me, I just DNF it. So I think that's working really well for me because I have almost no books to mention here. Um, but like, what are some of the ones I DNF'd? I wrote them down. Uh, Marianne by Daphne du Maurier, just too intense for me. I think du Maurier is just too intense for me. Um, I always have so much anxiety when I'm reading her books. Um, Trading in Danger by Elizabeth Moon, which I was just bored by that one. I was listening to it at night though, so maybe that's part of why, but it just, it really wasn't gripping me, unfortunately. That's sci-fi, military sci-fi. I've enjoyed some other books by Elizabeth Moon, so I really wanted to get involved in her longer Vada series and see if I liked it, but unfortunately not. I DNF'd De Montfort by British writer Joanna Bailey. This is a play that I was... Um, reading as a potential for our Feb Regency read aloud play that we were going to do. Um, but I DNF'd it. I mean, the writing was really beautiful, but it was just super melodramatic and I, I just, I didn't really care. Um, next, Goldenrod by Maggie Smith. I also DNF'd. I'm trying to get into poetry. I want to be a poetry girly. So far, I'm not, unfortunately. Um, I mean, the nature poems were nice, I guess, what I read of them, but it just wasn't like blowing me away. I've also read Mary Oliver and felt the same way. So maybe nature po poetry is just not for me, but I've literally read really beautiful nature poetry. I've written beautiful nature poetry. <laughs> so I like some of it, but it's just, she wasn't for me. She also in mixed some political stuff in there and it was just like, heard it. <laughs> so that wasn't my favorite. And then I also DNF'd Heartless by Marissa Meyer. And again, I feel like a lot of these books are probably just not for me. Um, this one was one that was just not for me because I have read her village and or villain origin stories before. And uh, she, she wrote one about a, an evil queen from the Lunar Chronicle series. I couldn't even finish it. It was so anxiety inducing. It was like, I do not like villain origin stories. I don't think. I think I just don't like them. So this is the village and vill villain origin story of the queen of hearts and it was a we love jenny read so that's partly why i picked it up and because we were reading it on sprints together um sarah esther and me and she was loving it so that's how i know it's probably just a me thing her writing to me is very plain and she keeps things moving like it's very neat writing you know there's not a word wasted um and if you skip a line or two you'll actually miss something important like every line is important in a writing which is something that's pretty cool. It's just, it's really boring. The Her writing is really not pretty or adorned very nicely. <clears throat> so it just wasn't for me. And again, anxiety inducing. So those are my least favorites of the year. Most read genres so far. So not including DNFs again. <coughs> um, my most read genre is nonfiction, memoir, and biography. I've read nine of those this year. Um, I've read two science fictions, six horrors, five classics, one fantasy, two poems, um, two romanticy, three manga, one thriller, two young adult, three middle grade, one literary fiction, and one mystery. Um, and maybe, did I add, maybe I did. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my breakdown. So I am doing really well reading nonfiction, which is great. Um, five. Uh, a book that surprised you. So Bunny by Mona Awad surprised me so much. I just read this one because basically Jenny loved it. <laughs> and also I've seen Chloe, um, Chloe Bunny talking about this. I love her channel. Oh, it's so great. Um, but yeah, she, she named her channel Chloe Bunny. So I knew that she loved it. And I was so curious what the whole bunny thing was about. And now I get it. Okay, this was like a mind... Okay. I just posted a review of this on Goodreads. It, it was a mind game that I enjoyed all the way through. And 
at the end, it wasn't like surprising me anymore exactly, but I was still like so in it. Like I really think listening to it was a good choice because some of the reviews I was reading, people were confused about what was happening and they mentioned that her writing seemed pretentious and that makes sense. I mean, that, that would fit the tone of the book because it's about an MFA program. It's about a student who goes to an MFA program and it's the first all-female cohort of this MFA program. And the other four girls in her MFA workshop class are, it's like a foursome who are known as the bunnies. And they seem to like kind of be one of one mind. I called them mono mind in my review. So it's kind of creepy. And after being with them for a semester, the main character really, she would like to be friends with them, but they're just so different from her. But when they invite her to their famous smut salon, this is a very adult book. I should just mention that as well. <laughs> she goes to kind of humor them and she just does not expect at all what's going to happen. <laughs> um, so it was really fun taking this ride with her and it really, really made you feel like the intensity of um, what it is like to create a book and also to be around women that you're forced to be around through no choice of your own, but you don't get along with them. So I, I really enjoyed this so much. And it was such a surprise. It was so dark. It was very gruesome. Um, it was very horror, literary horror kind of thing. So, but thanks to Jenny, I picked it up and I loved it. Thank you, Jenny. Probably a, a favorite of the year, I would say for sure. Shocked by that. Shocked that I loved it. Um, okay. Next, oh yeah, shocked that I loved Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth, but it was truly a page turner. You just, I just don't expect a book that long to be such a page turner, but it was. The characterization, the writing, it was so good, so good. Okay, next. Oh, and Midnight Sun. I was also totally shocked that I loved this. I was really afraid that I was going to read this and just be like, I don't like it. It's it's too juvenile, but I, I definitely loved this. <laughs> this was so great. I did. I won't talk about it too much because I'll be talking about it a lot in other videos and I already have. So, but this is Twilight from Edward's perspective and you really get a new perspective on Edward by reading this. And somebody actually commented, Cheryl um, from Candlewick Library, she actually commented and said she didn't like Edward until she read this and so I've been proven wrong. I In that video of going through all my notes, I was like, I don't think that anybody would, anybody who was a, not a fan of Edward would pick up Midnight Sun. So I was like, she's writing to the reviewers who had problems with Edward and Bella, but I don't think any of those people would just pick this book up because they weren't a fan, but I was wrong. <laughs> so Cheryl picked it up, but she said she really liked Edward much better after this. And also Bella came off better. So yeah, I think it was a success. <laughs> it was so fun. Super fun. I really enjoyed it. Okay, next. Maybe I'm becoming a romanticy person. I don't know. I'm trying to think of other romanticy that I've read. I, there's not very many that I like, but I love the Twilight series. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, book that's coming out in 2024 already that you want to read but haven't yet. Okay, I'm super excited for this question. I've been just waiting for it. I am on a hold list for The Fox Wife by Yang Zi Chu or something. Um, not quite sure how to pronounce this. I'm so excited. All I know about it is that it involves a fox spirit and it's set in Manchuria at the turn of the century. And that's all I needed to know, <laughs> to be honest. I, I'm so in. I'm so excited for it. I'm just waiting so I can jump all over it. I have a lot of books that I thought were really new also coming out. Like I Love Run I Love Russia by Elena Kostyachenko. But all of the other books that I'm on hold for that are newer that I was so proud of myself for reading new releases, they were all published in 2023. So <laughs> I guess I'm just not the best at picking up on new re releases. But this one I found and I'm reading it. So Okay, one goal you've made that you're succeeding at. So this is so funny. I actually gave up on my goal of reviewing books on Goodreads. And then suddenly during Lent, when I wasn't, when I had 
deleted Instagram except for like six hours of the day, which I'm usually working during those six hours, so I don't really have a lot of time to go on Instagram. Um, but since I started deleting Instagram and YouTube Studio, I just started posting on Goodreads. Um, and I've really enjoyed having coherent thoughts about books again that I'm like writing out. So I'm really enjoying being on Goodreads for now. So that was not even a goal this year. That was like my goal last year, but this year I'm actually doing it. So yay for me, I guess. I'm also listening to audiobooks a lot and not just listening to the news, which is great. And I'm also listening, I'm trying to listen to like new stuff, new YouTube channels, new K-pop, um, I just felt like Jenny was really good at that and she's really inspiring me to be better about looking for new channels, looking for new music, looking for new books, have my eyes on the horizon and not just on the past because it's great to have one foot in the past. It, it makes you be a more balanced person, honestly, but if you just have your head in the sand about the future and what's coming out now, I just don't want to be like that anymore, you know? And I think that was a phase of my life that was totally fine because that's where I, that's what I wanted to read, you know? And I think that's totally fine for me of the past. And But me of the future is inspired by Jenny and wanting to get with the times a little bit more. So that's just a goal that I'm actually doing great on. I'm reading lots of new newer releases, at least published in the last year or so, um, and nonfiction, which was also a goal. And I'm also responding to texts and comments more quickly, I think, than I was in the past because I'm allowing myself to just heart things sometimes. And also, this is something I'm working on with my therapist and my husband. Responding to things quickly, even if I don't have as much time to make it perfect, you know, that's what I'm trying to do right now because sometimes I'll just be like, oh, that's going to take me some time or I'm too anxious about it and then I put it off and then it just gets worse with time. So it means that I'm spending more time probably communicating um, than I was, which isn't a bad thing. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not a bad thing. Sometimes I can get a little overwhelmed with how much communication I have to do on a daily basis, but it's fine. You know, I work from home. I don't really have to do that much. So anyways, um, I'm doing pretty good at that though. A goal that I need to work on more though was I was doing really well writing weekly letters to my representatives and senators um, about North Korea and our policies toward North Korea. There's several policy changes that we could make that I really want the U.S. government to make. And so I started writing and I got letters back from them. And I also realized some of the things that I was asking for, I was using a website that gave me like these things to ask for. And I realized that the first one that I was asking for, that we would appoint a special, like a kind of representative um, for the interests of North Korea to, I think the U UN, I forget exactly what the position is now, but that, this was a couple months ago now. I saw that actually Biden did uh, appoint this a person like that back in October. So right, probably right around the time when I was starting to write, uh, that's when he appointed it. Um, so probably not from anything I did, but I just realized, oh, I've been writing for three months for him to, you know, uh, start to get this appoint this appointment going, and he already did it. So I should really research all of these points and make sure that they're not behind the times. The website did update it and they marked it as a check mark, you know, the special envoy person has been appointed, but I wanna double check everything else that they're requesting as well to make sure that none of that has happened yet. So that's something I really need to work on so that I can get back on it and I wanna to respond to the letters that they sent me um, because I was really encouraged that they actually responded to me. So I wanna keep asking, it sounds like they're listening. Um, so anyways, I really want that to be part of the, our political conversation. So, and it sounds like they are interested in making it also a part of the political conversation. So that's exciting. Next, um, new to you booktubers and bookstagrammers and book talkers for 2024 that I would recommend. So I just found YouTube just remind, this is another thing that I'm, like I said, I'm just getting back into and I'm, I really need to keep working on it. And that is watching new channels. So Yao Liu, yeah, Lou. She's a she has 54 subscribers, so she's still a very baby channel, but she's been posting really regularly um, for several months, and um, she reads like a lot of. I think she's trying to read along with her. She's trying to read like Owns Voices stuff, 
and I think she must be on book talk too because a couple of the things that she mentioned to me like there's some kind of protest happening of like Wednesday books and something else because of maybe they're being pro-Israel or something so I think she's probably on book talk it's a, that sounds like a book talker thing to say so I think she's on book talk but I found her through a video I need to, oh, she has a new video out five days ago. I need to check it out. Um, this video was taking the quiz that creates a reading list for you. I thought that is such a creative video. So I really enjoyed watching that and I watched her wrap up and yeah, it sounds like she's like just diving into things that, you know, I have a lot of nostalgia for because I read them a long time ago or I, I remember hearing about them a long time ago. So it's fun to watch her. It's Isn't it always fun to watch kind of a new reader or a reader who's just rediscovering things that you remember from the past? Like, it's just fun. So yeah, I'm enjoying uh, Yao Lu and there's another one as well that I'm really enjoying. Uh, Mel Reads. I just discovered Mel Reads. She is not a new channel by any means, but she's new to me. YouTube has been recommending me these giant channels that I'm like, how have I never watched you? <laughs> You're giant. <laughs> um, so clearly there's some, some big booktubers that I'm just not even aware of, but um, Mel Reads, I'm really enjoying her channel. I think she must be Latin descent. I, I feel like she could, I feel like Spanish is her first language. She mentioned something like that in a video. So um, she's, she's really cute. Um, I think what I really enjoyed from a video of hers recently, um, she does like long videos, which is really fun. Jenny and I used to talk about how much we love long videos. Um, but she did a video, all the books I've read recently. Was that the one that I read that I watched? Yeah. Um, and she talked about manhwa recommendations and she mentioned that manhwa is so great because it has colored illustrations versus manga, which doesn't. And I thought, oh, I wonder, that's so interesting because like webtoons often are also colored. I, in fact, are most webtoons colored illustrations? So um, I remember someone at my library told me that her daughter was really into Korean manhwa versus manga because of the colored illustrations. So I was like, I'm totally ordering one of the ones she recommended as her favorite um, I forget what it was now, but I ordered it for the library. So hopefully it'll come into the library and I'll be able to read it and talk about it on my channel. But I'm really enjoying getting to know Mel Reed's channel. So um, there was two ones that I've just recently started watching. And I've been trying to also reconnect with people that I, I, I'm just, I'm trying to, I just have a lot of friends now on BookTube and it's hard to keep up with everyone's channel. They always have such cool stuff happening and going on and yeah. So I'm, I'm also trying to watch all of my friends and not just neglect them and watch new stuff. Um, but there's just, I've, I get recommendations all the time now from YouTube about new channels. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to check them out. There's one person who was like talking about being a romance author and the things that she's learned being a romance author. I'm like, wow, this is so interesting. Um, I forget. I, I would have to go back and find her name. But anyways lots of great stuff lots of great stuff coming out on youtube these days so anyways that's the end of this tag i hope that you guys enjoyed watching it let me know down below um maybe what's your favorite book that you've read so far of the first quarter and maybe your maybe your least favorite book um so yeah i would love to hear from you in the comments and take care until next time <laughs>